and y'all already know what time it is. It is time to cover the NU Council Slate, and look at this! We banned a couple Pokemon! <laughs> and look at which one we banned! <laughs> Woohoo! I've been telling y'all, and it's really funny. I'll talk about this a little bit more later, as in, in like, a minute or two. But, I had been saying for the longest time, Pom Pom is broken. Why are these kids telling me, Scrafty? Iron Thorns, I mean, we banned that too, but you know the idea. And tell it, why, why is this one I'm getting told is broken? Pom Pom's the only mod I hate. And, and look at this. It may be a month late, but in, in, let's pop people. I'm going to talk about this council. Of course, you've been enjoying the content. <laughs> Make sure that you subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I'm on my way to 7k subscribers. I'm getting very, very close. I'm like 300 away, so I know if everyone watching right now helped me out, went and subscribed, I mean, hit that tonight. I think that'd be really cool. And of course, if your goal is 10k, so hey, join that movement, subscribe today. So, I, we're going to talk about the months I got banned first. And Iron Thorns and Pom, not Pomont, Pom Pom are the two. So, how did this slate end up being created? I think it's a good first question. Well, one, we wanted to ban, not ban, revote on everything we unbanned. Because that's just good due diligence on our part, even if we didn't necessarily think that all the drops... Plus, all the unbans needed a vote. We wanted to still vote on these specifically. Since we just voted to unban them, wanted to give a little bit of a checkup. And then we looked at the most egregious of the undrops. We felt that Palmont and Lucario were the most on paper and in practice through what we'd seen in Tours. Problematic of the bunch. And then Drought and Pom Pom were thrown in because of like recent tournaments where Pom Pom has been kind of busted for a while now, in my view, based on tournament replays and just my experience using it, basing it on the ladder, etc. Drought, meanwhile, is something that had been picking up, like we talked about, very late in January, about mid to late January, actually, and even post Hisui and Lilligan ban has still seen pretty successful usage, so thought it was a good idea to vote on that, too. Now, Iron Thorns got banned, and I don't think that Iron Thorns' ban is necessarily very shocking. The tier hasn't really gained anything that can help us check it. Like, if I'm looking at... Hold on, let me do this. I want to show the VR real quick, because it just shows us the drops here. So, if I go to Viability Rankings, and I look at all the new drops, can we please reference what here helps versus Iron Thorns? <laughs> I mean, it, we got... Scarf Legion, which I guess counts. I I guess. I, Inteleon is faster in offensive pressure. I mean, a lot of these mods are faster in offensively pressured thorns. A lot of the issue with them, though, is many of them are Terra Fodder. So, like, Terra Fairy is pretty good at screwing up with Lucara and Pomot. Those are going to try and use a fighting move to revenge kill you. Obviously, Iron Thorns most commonly terastalizes into a fairy type, so that's not very helpful. Grim Snarl deals with the same issue. Sucker Punch doesn't really mess with you when you just turn into a fairy. Eggy Alola is a bit more curious because it's slower. <laughs> and technically has Leaf Storm to hit you with, but Iron Thorns are just going to have Ice Punch, so that doesn't really work. Hisui Decidui, if it's defensive, it might tank a hit. But I ask you, what does it do in return? You know, because defensive sets are running like triple arrows, knockoff, roost and defog, so that's not very helpful. And in NDD, although it's a good offensive answer, one, it's, you know, unless you're Scarf, you're just outsped after a DD. But two, it's one of the best enablers, because denying priority as a means of revenge killing Iron Thorns is just very, very consistent. Take away options like Lucario, E Speed. Potential bullet punches as well, although that move is kind of niche. It'd like maybe be run on Luke, maybe Hitmonlee, but they've got better things to run against. Like Hariyama. We're not talking about very, very prevalent sets here. So I think it helps too for Thorns' Ben case that terrain had remained really, really potent, and that kind of carries over to Pom Pom as well. But with terrain being so good, grassy terrain in specific, Iron Thorns really benefited from this because one of its issues might be that as it's trying to set up it takes a little bit of chip like if you're trying to set up versus defensive pokemon it's not too uncommon for them to try and trade a little bit versus you and at least weaken you into range of a priority attacker especially if you try and threaten the terastalize teams will try and intimidate pivot around it as well we've seen that with pokemon like wolfish and tauros paudia 
Aqua, sometimes you throw in Blaze there too if you want. And with the most common scar for being Flygon, that's one of the premier revenge killers. But if you've got Grassy Terrain, you don't even have to tear the tank and Earthquake. Like, you just live one. You take like 80, mind you, but you live one, and that's really good. I actually think, and maybe I'm wrong on the thought processes here of why people have been running this set, but it makes sense in my head. So I pointed this out in, I think it was yesterday's video, we talked about some of the NUCL games. Special Attack and Flygon. I think one of the reasons people are running that is because you bypass Thorns' potential Grassy Terrain support. Obviously, it can still just tear a fairy, <laughs> right? It can still tear a fairy and mess you up. But a lot of Thorns players are willing to get greedy. We've seen so much Stealth Rock Flygon. It's almost always on a Scarf set where they just throw it on there as a filler move. You don't really need anything other than you turn Earthquake and a Dragon type move. But they'll throw Stealth Rock as the last option and just say, sure, here's my rocker. Otherwise, I've got spikes or I've just got like, maybe I'm running a very strong offensive team and I just have a ton of threats. And I have rocks here. Basically, it's just the, you know, hey, I should break focus ashes, right? Helps for a little bit of chip too. But special attacking flagon is a cool option that similarly sets rocks, but maybe Thorns users will get greedy versus you. They'll thank your scarf and then they get popped by an earth power and then you just die. <laughs> so I think that's been a cool adaptation to see, but all in all, I mean, it's not like it's really limiting Thorns. And overall, I wouldn't say it's a particularly great set, just given... I don't think pure utility Flygon is very convincing in this gen. I think that no roost kind of sucks. I think Flygon as a special attacker is very, very lackluster. I am not working with the 80 base special attack Pokemon and calling that a threat. I'm just not. <laughs> so that's a little bit troubling. It's not meant, of course, to be a breaker or anything. It's just kind of... I don't think he maximized Flygon's potential very well with that set. So although I'm content to see people use it, I think it's good to see the general adaptation and it's clearly functional. I don't think it's like this god tier saving the meta adaptation. But yeah, with terrain still at a high point and Thorns not really gaining any defensive counterplay and the offensive counterplay not really being the most incredible. I mean, we've even seen Terra Dark Iron Thorns get a little bit of run, which is very funny if you're trying to deny Psychic users, mostly Indidi is what I'm thinking about here. We we're just trying to set up versus Indidi. Being able to Dragon Dance up is very, very funny. So, yeah, Mon got banned. This felt very cut and dry to me. I thought it was about the same threat level as when I originally voted to ban it. So, it made sense to me to just ban it again. <laughs> and then Pom Pom. Remember? A little thing I talked about all through January. Once we hit like the midpoint through the end of the month, I'm just like, I don't know why we're voting on these other Pokemon. Iron Thorns was like the exception. I felt pretty good about banning that. But for a little bit, I'm just like, why am I getting talks about Globro? I don't care about no stupid Globro. Get this dumb bird off my screen. Like Pom Pom has felt. I've seen a couple people. I want to talk about this a little bit real quick. Cause I saw some people asking why Pom Pom now? Why not ban it last month when it was arguably better? Well, for starters, and I will reference this to you, I would love to hear what here is like making Pom Pom worse. Thorns? A Terra Ground is one of the most common terrestrializing types, so I don't really buy into that. And then what else here? <laughs> what else here? There's some offensive mods again that they'll limit setup, but. Pom Pom was never meant to try and set up versus these mods anyway. I mean, they're just more strong special attackers. Like, that's never really been the setup target. Unless you're talking about, like, quivering up versus maybe, like, a Gudra that you think will Draco in pre-DLC metas. A lot of special attackers that are that level of, like, powerful, you'd only try and set up on if you think that they're gonna use a stat dropping move. I mean, we've even seen, like, Oricorio Bale in the meta with we had Florgus originally. Maybe you try to set up versus like Specs Florgus, but that's because you resist the move. So I don't really buy these as particularly great drops to limit it because they don't really do anything. <laughs> They're just kind of there to exist as hey, I mean, you get the double switch, then congrats, you are preventing setup there. 
but most special attackers that are of that ilk would still do the same. So I don't really think that works as, you know, counterpoint. And so I look back to just Pom Pom last month and I'm like, what really has changed then? Terrain is still great. It still works really, really well in grassy terrain teams, which, you know, again, with Thorns especially, are super dominant. And I haven't really been convinced that the meta is bulked up enough to where Quiver Dancing Pom Pom just does not auto win you a lot of games. Of course, it's never that simple because it's Pokemon. Typically, a mod is going to need to boost more than once to sweep you. And people aren't wrong when they talk about Pom Pom's bulk not being what it used to be. If a Pom Pom can't secure multiple boosts, yeah, I mean, it's probably not running you down and you could probably stop it. My issue has always been that I don't think there's really a ton that stops it from getting the second boost, especially when terastalizing with it. That was one of the most toxic interactions, I think, in the game, where you don't even have to tech a terrible move onto your set, or an otherwise terrible move in Terra Blast. You just keep Revelation Dance, you literally lose no coverage at all, and you're just good to go. Like, I can have randomly a water move on my set, randomly a ground move, but it doesn't come at the expense of, at some point, having that electric move on my set. Which is pretty, pretty annoying. And if we want to talk about two Pom Pom in comparison, maybe, to um last month. I know Snorlax obviously wasn't very common in any last month. I mean, that's why it felt a few. But it completely falling off the face of the earth has done a lot of good for Pom Pom, because it's one of the fat mons that could trade with it. And I mean, we look at the VR too, let's talk about like what's really trading with Pom Pom and what makes it so good. So Flygon being not a great revenge killer is of course one of the things. Globro, you could try and argue this trade, but again, Terra Ground Revelation Dance is kind of annoying to have to play around. Deancey, we've seen Terra Water Oricorio beat it, we've seen Terra Ground beat it, not really convinced. Uh, Flamigo, this mod in part has fallen off a bit in recent time because of Pom Pom, seeding free setup to it has been very, very bad. Now, I think it's still a good mod, but we literally saw this drop. Well, I mean, I'm gonna do a VR video. Probably have that come out tomorrow, I don't know yet. We don't have the update done, so I'm just gonna do my own opinions, but Flamigo is projected to drop to like A- minus or something, and lots of that is Pom Pom. AV Meloetta, we have seen the spawn is capable of trading with the Oricorios, but you throw in the grassy seed sets, it gets very, very dicey very quickly. Aquaporos remains a great revenge killer. Won't talk anything about that. Thunderous is just set up fodder unless you have taunt, and that's not very common. Serena is being forced to run triple axle a lot of the time just to not seed set up. Umbreon is, of course, really good at dissuading it because you have toxic. The problem is we have seen Oricorio has enough teching to where it's not like the most consistent matchup whether it's Substitute, or like Taunt, or even just Terra Steel. These are all still viable options. Of course, you can't have them all at once, but I feel like that, you know, that debate always gets kind of, um, kind of annoying to do, because like, well, I can't have all these sets at once, but also it's like, the fact that I can't have any of them, and none of them are particularly easy to guess based on preview, kind of plays into it a little bit more in my favor. Talk about Chandelure again. This is a strong mon that can dissuade you, but I don't know. If I quiver up as you switch it and quiver again, do you actually scare me? If you don't have trick, you literally can't do anything to me, so it's kind of bleak. Raj is falling off and doesn't even really run moves that can affect it too frequently. Dragalge is Terra Blast grounded into Oblivion. Registeel just cannot touch you. Salazzle doesn't exist in this meta really right now. Vile Plum. I am a flying type. How dare you? And then, you know, it's not like it gets really any better. Like, the only thing here that I really look at is a valuable check, outside of, like, Lax, which we've talked about, has fallen off a cliff. It's dropping to, like, C or something next VR slate, I swear to God. Um, maybe, like, Calmine Sylveon can try and boost against it? Um, you've got, like, Switcheroo or just, you know, Switcheroo Toxcorp or Choice Scarf Klefki, I guess? Same with, like, Scarf Florg... Not Scarf Florg, God. I guess that would work, similar to Trick, but you've got, like, Calmine Florgus, maybe? There's just not a ton going on to really limit Pom Pom. And I think as well with how good these terrain teams are, it's not a bad idea to hit them in one of their strongest spots if you're just trying to tone them down. And maybe you view the banning of both Iron Thorns and Oricorio as a little bit reactionary. I would say Thorns is perhaps a bit reactionary. I would say Pom Pom is just overdue. 
And yeah, so the overall pushback I have at the end of the day of the why Ori Corio Pom Pom now point is it, it's literally just this. Me personally, I've been saying this mod's broken for a month now. So <laughs> this isn't anything new for me. I've been consistent this whole time. <laughs> Maybe you all think I could have uh, pushed for a vote earlier. And you're not wrong. I do, in fact, lead in you. You know, to borrow an eternally quote, I have uh, 10 badges that lead in you. I'm fine. GG. I definitely could have pushed for it. I think the problem is there wasn't really much support in Council at the time. It was like me, and then I think eternally in that span as well, towards the end of January, started also feeling the same way as me, where he's just like, huh, this mod is kind of cringe still, isn't it? And yeah, I got banned. Now the question will be, does one of the other Oricoros rise up? Because we've talked in the past a ton about what makes Pom Pom better than both of Sensu and Bailey, what, whatever it is. I'm trying to satiate the three of you that care how I pronounce that one. But we talked about its benefits to them. And I do think that that will probably end up being relevant once again. But we'll see. Maybe, maybe none of them are good. I've seen enough Sensu to think Sensu could pop up in the meta. I've seen enough of Firebird to say that it probably won't pop up in the meta just because there's so many other fire types, but hey, you never know. And now we talked about what didn't get banned. So Palmot got two banned votes. I think Palmot has shown this week of NUCL that it is one of the best breakers in the tier. Terra Electric letting you keep double shock spamming is very, very potent. And it's got enough teching on its move slots and just set in general to where it always can get a little bit better for a certain matchup now i'm not talking about these like insane amounts of different variation there's like natural cure rest for example versus volt absorber iron fist then you could throw that and have like mock punch as a last move you could have knockoff you could do scarf or band instead of life orb like at the end of the day it's kind of like the serena point where i feel like most of the sets still at the end of the day do the same damn thing but palmite of course is far more deadly than Serena and just is a different Pokemon. You're talking about a Breaker versus a Mon that's more of a utility route that still will often go defensive. Palmot's just pure offensive. I mean, there, there's just nothing more to it. And I think Palmot, we've seen through the calcs what this Mon can do. It is very, very intimidating when you look at what the calcs are for it. I think it's another Inteleon situation, though, where you then look at the bulk, and you go, wow, a gentle gust of wind will kill this mon. And so it does make it actually a little bit harder to pilot. You have to get very good play with it. You have to partner it with, like, the optimal pivots, since you're always getting it in. I think Dragalge was very cool to see, ver not versus it, alongside it. Every game Palmot was brought, I believe, this week, there was a Dragalge. It was also, like, the same team that was brought every game, but I digress. It's not too important. I can even show you that right now. Let's open this up. There's like three or four Palmont games that I have seen. Okay, good good work. RBY player don't really care though. Let me see, where is the um games? Was this one with a Palmont? No, not at all actually. I covered that game. Wow, I'm so smart. So here was a Palmont game right here. Y'all remember this from yesterday's video. Palmont plus Dracology. And then we've got... I have to remember which games, because again, they use like the same damn team each time. <laughs> uh, should be page two. Not you. Not you. I think it was maybe this game? Yep. Once again, same team. Palm up plus Dracology. Um, I don't think it was you. No, it was. And in this game, they just made it a Registeel instead, because Registeel's better. But no ground immunity is L cringe. But, y'all see the point. The pivot support works very, very well for Palmot. And Dragalge, conveniently, like, feasting versus Vileplume is nice. Plume, you can two-shot with Ice Punch on the Switch, but having a Mon that just explicitly beats at 1v1, and since you're so good at forcing it out, it can generally just get you free momentum on an incoming steal, is nice. I ended up voting not banned, though. I don't think the speed tier is good enough for how good it is offensively to where it's, like, offsetting the complete lack of anything defensive going on. Flygon being our best Scarfer and being able to just always keep it at bay is also very nice, especially, again, since this mon is Terra Electricing like 99.9% .9 of the time. 
I do, I do like from a defensive counterplay standpoint, or not even defensive from an offensive counterplay standpoint, the Palmot's going offensive Terra's, just because it means like, man, most of the time I'm safe to EQ that mod with my damn flag on. Okay, my scarf gun can come out and EQ you, and I'm not worried about you turning into a flying type. My Meloetta can psychic you, and I'm not worried about you turning into like a steel type. I mean, obviously you're losing the weakness to psychic, but still, I know you're gonna be an electric type at least. It's easier to chip you into range of that when you're not resisting the move, so there you go. Scrafty also not getting any ban votes. I think since bulk up is typically viewed as the best set, in the meta so fast paced, it is kind of hard for those slower setup sweepers to feel particularly dominant. However, I do think Dragon Dance Scrafty could very quickly and very easily step up to prominence. We just haven't seen a ton of that. I think we've seen maybe one game of it in NUCL this week, if my memory's not betraying me. So I'd say be on the lookout for Scrafty still. Even though it's not really taken the meta over by Storm, it is still a Pokemon very, very obviously worth watching out for. Because, yeah, I mean, it's probably one of the best Terrastalizers in the tier. Especially when you look at its dual stabs and how constrained, I would say the switch-ins to it are. I think it helps that Plume is so good right now. I think it helps that um, Plot Globro is so good, and at the very least, you can just tear water and drop your weakness to knock off. And you boost faster, so you should be able to get into range of two-shotting Scrafty before it can get into range of two-shotting you. All of that. Inteleon. Not even uh, not even a majority ban vote here. Not even a 50-50. We have... Are, are we finally, like, improving as a council? Are we are we over this mon, please? I'm still looking at you three zoomers right here in a row. And then GXC. I, he's a Bills fan. That's that's a fate bad enough itself. I'm still looking at these three right here. And I, I know you're rigging the vote. I, I already know. I'm kidding. I'm also not kidding. How dare you? Anyhow. I, I don't see what's changed in one week to make Inteleon look more broken. I really don't. Some of I know some of them just think Inteleon's still broken. It shouldn't have been unbanned. Although, some of them voted to unban it. I think. <laughs> Anyhow, perhaps you would say the same thing here and go, what, what has changed? Well, there, there are actually a couple things that have changed here. One, Legion is actually like a good defensive answer to Inteleon. Yes, it is Dark Pulse. It's not running Dark Pulse right now. And starting another on Dark Pulse on sets does actually have some drawbacks. Does it mean you're dropping Ice Beam entirely? Well, probably no, because that sounds kind of ass, right? No Ice Beam so that Grass types can check you even more easily. Yeah, that doesn't sound very good. So, you're dropping your secondary Water move. And that's kind of not the best either. It's not like... it's This is not some huge drawback. I do want to emphasize that. that. This is not something huge that limits Inteleon to the ends of day. But, the ends of the earth, not ends of the day. But it is something that I think is still worth keeping in mind, because it means now you either are running Hydro Pump as your main water attack, or your only, and that's not always ideal. Because Hydro Pump, a little guy named Accuracy here, yeah, it, it's not a very consistent move, it misses a lot. So, that can cause Inteleon to become a little less reliable when you don't have the weaker but still pretty strong option to fall back on. And then if you drop Hydro Pump entirely, well, okay, now you don't have that to potentially get some certain Okos and Tuit KOs that you need. So Legion helps for that. Hisui to sit, I mean, it's another Grass type that can go on teams. Yes, it gets Ice Beamed, but at the very least, it is more counterplay. Same with, like, Eggy Alola, where you punish it for locking into the water moves very, very effectively. And the meta's just way, 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 way favorable to offense through both team types and even new drops. You look at Mons that dropped, we have both Lucario and Palmot that are pretty common users of priority moves. Gallade, I guess, as well, you could throw in there. It's like Shadow Sneak, it's fine on it. Agility sets as well. And if you want to talk about even, like, we could talk new Scarfers as well. I mean, Legion happens to run Scarf a lot. Yes, it doesn't have coverage for Inteleon all too commonly, but bro, I will tear water wave crash you into the Shadow Realm. I guarantee that move does like 75 minimum or something. <laughs> <laughs> Something insane like that. Just got like Sucker Punch, Grim Snarl back. E Speed Lucario, Moth Punch here. Um, Unburden Hitmonlee is a thing here. Lots of options. Lots of options. 
So I don't really think Inteleon is close to a broken mon. And of course, I've been voting to not ban it, to unban it. Like, I've been trying to keep this mon on this tier as much as I can. Because I think NU is better with Inteleon in it. Because it gives balance teams a lot. Bal balance has been struggling, I think, a lot of this time. Because they they keep banning the breakers that give speed. Like, I'm having to rely on these Scarfers that aren't particularly fast. Well, no. Scarfers aren't particularly strong for my speed. And it comes at the cost of a lot of breaking power. Because now my team's either... You know, if I don't run a Scarfer, my team's either kind of slow. Or it's kind of passive because I do run a Scarfer. And I can't really fit a nice amount of um speed otherwise. You also could end up with this issue where you're like... Okay, my team has some speed, but I still feel like I'm not getting enough power. Because, again, the Scarfers aren't, like, super strong. I'm talking about, like, Flygon is one of the best Scarfers. That Mon isn't strong. That Mon isn't threatening things. Look at the other Scarfers. I mean, you got, like, Mingo. Mingo, Meloetta, Poros aren't, like, the weakest Mons out there. They just have some issues with immunities. Other than Migo, it's these two that do, though. And this is going to be spamming Wave Crash otherwise if it doesn't want to deal with immunities, which... Lamau. Love recoil, so there's that. Um, Lucario got a ban vote. That was interesting. I I don't know. Lucario had one really good performance in this week of NUCL. Shout out to the doc. Where again does a video we did or we did the replay coverage in the video yesterday. But Lucario had really good success in that game. It was able to limit an entire HO team basically on its own. Otherwise, I've really not seen a ton of Lucario. I of course, used it one video. It felt pretty decent, but nothing world-beating. Still a mod I'd keep an eye on. I think it has potential to kind of run this tier down again. It's just E-Killer, but worse. <laughs> but hey, E-Killer, but worse. Turns out that's still pretty good. We'll be managing... Not managing. We'll be monitoring it, but I'm not entirely sure Lucario is, like, actually a huge threat yet. It still has some pretty obvious issues, particularly if you're trying to look for setup with it. It's not like terrestrializing makes this mon bulky or anything. And when we talk about what it's terra, it's like terra normal always, right? Because you want your speed to be a lot stronger. And that doesn't really give you valuable defensive utility unless you're very, very fortunately matched against a choice lot ghost. And newsflash, we don't have a ton of those. Um, there's Golurk, which can be banded. There's a Shandy, which can be choiced. Otherwise, um, it's not really that likely to face one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think y'all can see where I'm going with all that. And then last, Drought. We did vote on Drought, and some people may be a little confused since Hisuian Lilligant was banned. Of course, that was supposed to handle the sun issue, so okay, why re-vote on Drought? I, I, this didn't really have a ton of talk in council chats. So I'm gonna keep it a stack with all of you. I think this was mostly just done because people were still thinking about Drought towards the end of January, where it really started catching on, of course, before Lilligant dropped, and they wanted to vote on it and just be like, eh, let's see. If, you know, it feels like a good time to vote on it. I mean, it's weather, so it's always going to be a little bit potent. But, yeah, only two people voted to ban it. I don't think it's particularly problematic at the moment, but you look at the metagame with a very obvious lack of bulky water types. It makes sense. Not like things like Ty Typhlosion, Charizard under Sun have particularly good defensive counterplay to begin with, but I still get it. I think when you look at, though, a lot of teams in Inu, you're generally just looking at how offense the opponent. As a result, I don't think Sun is, like, any more oppressive than Terrain. You got a lot of speed boosters on each type of team. You got a lot of strong wall breakers on each type of team. I think they both are about as good as each other. So there's that. But yeah, this is, as Eternally said, probably the only slate we're doing for the rest of the month. So your NU tier should be pretty stable now for the next two plus weeks. Hope y'all are enjoying it. Of course, anything you think maybe should be looked into in the council chat. That, anything you think should be looked into in the council chat, let me know down below. I like to always at least hear what the general community is thinking. Doesn't mean I'll do anything about it, but, <laughs> you know, I like to at least listen because I think it's good to get an idea of where everyone else is at with it. Don't want to stay too much in an echo chamber, you feel? So, thank you for watching, though. I think the meta should be in a much better spot, especially with this dumb bird, dumb, stupid, cringe bird out of my tier. 
very excited for that. But I will catch you all in the video tomorrow, guys. Yeah, that's it. Peace.